Okay, here we go again. Round two on a fucking Sunday. Um, let me just get that record going on the video. There we go. <sighs> Round two of of just uh, of just me. No comments. No fucking no no live show. Um, just uh, doing my thing here, if you will. Uh, this is literally like literally the, the episode before this. Um, I, I just ended it like five minutes ago and now I'm recording this one because I want to, I want to try and do two, two episodes a week through the month of June so that I can really, uh, you know, uh, you try and get more people to, to, to go to the new sponsor. Um, plus, you know, I've always thought it'd be cool to like pre-record some episodes and, and, uh, and, and try to do two episodes a week, it would be cool, but it is so much fucking work. Me and Ro were talking about this the other night. I don't remember how we got on the topic of podcasts and and doing them um, like as a living type of thing. But I was telling her, like, I remember the first time that I sat down with Jason Almey from Shit Happens When You Party Naked. The first time that we sat down together, he said something about a dream job, and I said, well, you're... Your dream job is still a job. And Ro and I have talked about dream jobs before too. And, and um, But I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to work your ass off for it. Like, it seems like a cool thing to be like, you know, oh, I do podcasting full time. And I listen to a few shows that, uh, that like people have, have been able to quit their regular job to just do podcasting. Which, you know, if you sit here and you just think like, oh, I just sit here for an hour and and it's no big deal. Well, I'm not making a living off of this, right? For me, if I wanted to like make, for me to make a living off of podcasting, I figure I'd have to make, I'd have to be bringing in probably about $3,000 a month. Um, you know, if I could make three, you know, and even then, like, I'm too much of a fucking money whore. You know, I couldn't really justify leaving the post office, the 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 security and stability of the post office, for three thousand dollars a month. It would have to be a lot more than that, and I mean a lot more than that. Like I would have to make. I, I don't even know. I, I the number is ridiculous though. The number is high, higher than whatever you're thinking right now. The number is it's probably higher. I would say, if I was making. $50,000 a month podcasting, I think I might leave the post office for that, for $50,000 a month. That is a lot of money. That's, uh, I don't even know. That's, that's like, I don't know, $750,000 a year or something like that, right? Five times, it's like $600,000 a year, $600,000 a year maybe. That's about the number that I would have to make a month podcasting to get me to want to leave the post office even though it's so much more than I made make at the post office I make nowhere even close to that amount I make almost 10 percent of that a month or a year rather that's that so that's what I make almost a a, a, a year at the post office is 10 percent of that number almost not even close so um I'd have to make about that much because I'd have to plan for the future Right. I'm not Joe Rogan. I'm not, you know, it's not, I didn't get paid a hundred thousand dollars by Spotify or a hundred million dollars, rather a hundred million dollars from Spotify to keep this going for the next five years. And even then you could at least plan. Like if someone were to offer me like, Hey, we'll pay you $600,000 for the next five years. That sounds great. That's, you know, a little over a hundred thousand dollars a year for the next five years. Great. But what about after that? You know, and then, you know, you know, and then you still have to like, it's not like I can just hit record once a week and do this for an hour. I still need to come up with shit to talk about. It's not, I, I would implore everyone who, who has ever listened to a single podcast and what by single, I mean like a person like me, a person like Bill Burr, like Jason Almy, I think most you know, sometimes does shows by himself. I would ask you to open up your computer and essentially just talk to your computer out loud for an hour once a week. Do that for a month and see how it goes. And and see how how you come up with shit to talk about. Um, you know, my first episode that I ever did, I 
I kind of cheated that a little bit, but it was more to get myself used to talking behind the microphone where I just looked up a hundred questions to ask yourself. And then I read those questions out loud and then I answered them for myself out loud. And, uh, and then since then, you know, this is episode 121 of the show. So, um, you know, since then I've gotten better about thinking throughout the week of what am I going to talk about on this week's episode? Can I make something funny? Can I make something, um, enlightening? Can I, can I expose people to, you know, can I, can I give you a peek behind the curtain at my life and what it's like? Um, you know, it's not a, it's certainly not as, not as easy as just hit record and start talking. But I do think that just about anyone could do it for the most part. I think I always thought like, First, I've had two thoughts in my whole life. One is that a movie could be made about everyone's life. Everyone has lived a life worthy of a movie. I'm not saying it's going to be Wolf of Wall Street worthy. Like it's not. It might not be that level of entertaining. It's not going to be like Lone Survivor or 13 Hours of Battle of Benghazi. It might not be like that level of entertaining. But I do think that everyone could have a movie made about their life because. We are all, you know, somehow naturally interested in what we've all, you know, what we've all experienced in life. And I think that we've all had different experience in life. I, I, I find it funny. I find it so fucking funny when, when someone says like, you know, that, that, that stupid thing that people say of like, oh, well, the police never shoot at me because I don't break the law. Well, you don't know what someone else is going through for the day, for their life, for the week, for a month. You don't know what someone else has been through to, to lead them to that point. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, my point is is that even if even if I could somehow make this a full like this is my full time thing, I make a hundred thousand dollars a year doing podcasting. Um, in fact, I think that the number that I, yeah the number that I just said was fifty thousand dollars a month. So even if I could say I make $50,000 a month doing podcasting, I still have to, there's a lot of fucking work that comes into doing that. It's not just, oh, I woke up and I just turned on the fucking computer and I started talking. It could never be that because if it was that, I'm 121 episodes deep. At this point, I should have been able to come to that at least a little bit of something, maybe even close to, I don't know, trying to... Uh, you know, trying to make some sort of money. And I do, uh, you know, I don't make a lot of money from the show. I get a commission from 4HM, a commission from Adam and Eve. And if I'm lucky, Manscaped might turn into a long-term deal where I actually get an income, but I don't, it's not going to be much. It might, if I'm lucky, it might cover the hosting of the podcast, which is really all I ever wanted anyways. I really just wanted to make money back to pay for the equipment that I've bought being the camera and the microphone and the boom arm that I have, I've only ever wanted those things and to pay for my monthly hosting, which isn't that much money. And granted, I probably haven't put as much work into this as I could. Uh, Ro had some really great um, business cards made up for me uh, and a great fucking uh, banner made up for me. Um, And what is the other thing? Uh, I am... Working on getting, like, making a t-shirt. I had stickers made a little over a year ago. I had stickers made. I paid for those out of pocket, and then I just gave them away for free. Um, I am working on getting t-shirts made, but, like, the t-shirt company that I found, those I could not give away. As much as I would love to just give away t-shirts, these t-shirts are, like, $35 each. And, uh, and, um... And I can't, I can't eat thirty five dollars plus shipping. So um, when I get the, t- I'm gonna get a t shirt made, um, because I have my first solo flight coming up soon. And after the first solo flight, they do like a picture. You get to have your picture taken with the plane, and they put you on their blog, on their website, and all this shit on Instagram and everything. And it's cool. I want to have a t shirt made, <laughs> you know, a little self promotion. So that I can wear this t-shirt on that day. And when they take my picture, I'll be wearing the shirt. So everyone that sees it will be like, oh, Adulting with Donnie podcast. I'm going to have to check that out. So a little free advertising. Um, so, uh, but I'm going to have one t-shirt, at least one t-shirt made for me. Probably like a tank top made for Row, And then, uh, and then um, you know, if there's an interest, if there's enough of an interest, maybe I'll have some more bought. But uh, But I'll have to get paid for those. 
And then there's like, even with that, like if you think about that, like you look at other podcasts, like we like shooting or, uh, generation Y true crime garage. They have a website, which I've never had a website. I've looked into it a bunch of times. I've tried Squarespace. I've tried the other websites that are like website builders and I just can't do it. I just, I'm sure I could learn if I could sit down for hours in a day, but I just don't have the free time to do it. It is 3.45 on Sunday. This is my second, no, this is my third podcast of the day. I still have one more to go after this is over. Me and Stan are doing an episode of We Deliver. I still have to clean my place. I still have, you know, uh, you know, there's just, uh, there's just not enough time in the day. Like I said on, on an episode a couple of weeks ago of like needing to move to another planet that has a 32 hour day. I would love that. A 32 hour day would be great. Um, you know, but, and it's Memorial Day weekend, and, you know, there's other things that I might rather be doing right now. You know, I wish I could be Joe Rogan. I wish I could get a $100 million deal and just take, a, you know, a week or two off here and there and uh, and still, you know, not worry about um, the content and all that shit. But, there's yeah, there's just so much that goes into it. Your dream job is always still going to be a job. Like, think about what what it is that you would like to do. Like, think like flying airplanes, right? I'm sure that Jack fucking loves flying airplanes. He loves being in an airplane. I know that a few weeks ago, you know, maybe a month or two ago, I was on a flight with him, and, and we're doing landings, and we're having fun. And he asked me, are you having fun? And I said, yes, I'm, I'm definitely having fun. And I looked over at him, and I said, what, do you, what about you? Are you having fun? And he said, uh, he said, dude, we're flying. I'm always having fun flying. But at the end of the day, it's still a job. You still have to get up in the morning and you still have to go to it. I once thought like if you could, if I could get paid to just shoot guns, that would be awesome, right? I thought that. And then me and my friend Jesse went to a firing range one day together because he worked for SIG. And they have a giant fucking range in Epping. And we go there and they were, this was before the, um, before their, their, their very popular um, small handgun came out. I, I forget what it's called right now. It's not a P320, but it's, it's I don't know. It's I forget what it is now, but it's like a compact gun. Um, it's the one that's been one of their most popular for the last few years. But this is before it was released to the public when they were still in testing phase of it. So me and Jesse go to the range on a Sunday, and there's this kid there, and he's loading ammo. He's loading thousands of magazines or maybe I should say hundreds of magazines, thousands of, of rounds, because he's going out to the range where he's just going to, because he's doing a stress test on the gun. So he's just going to the range, and he's shooting this gun. Bang, 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 bang. New magazine. Bang, 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 bang. New magazine. Bang, 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 bang. Just, that's all it was. It was a stress test of the gun. So me and Jesse go out to check on him, and he hands me the gun, and he's like, you want to try it? I said, hell yeah, I want to try it. Free ammo, free shooting, hell yeah. So I shoot this gun, and I went through about 10 or 15 magazines before I was like, all right, this is boring. All right, I'm done. Like, it seems cool, but it's still a job. Look at Coleon Noir. Um, you know, he does, um, he does uh, you know, these videos on YouTube about gun laws and everything, but, you know, and it probably seems really cool, and I know he makes a ton of money doing it, but still, he has to find content. He has to make these videos. Uh, every day is just... <coughs> uh, excuse me. Every day is just something new that he has to do with this with this whole thing. Um, you know, your dream job at the end of the day is still going to be a job. So, um, so, yeah. But anyways, two episodes for this week. And we'll see about next week. I'll try and do two more next week. You know, two more, two a week through the month of, through the month of June would be cool. Um, and, uh, and you know, it's not like I didn't come here unprepared. Um, you know, I still have stuff to talk about. Uh, the other night, me and Ro went out to dinner. So we've been together for almost a year. And we had a, we had a dinner date planned. Uh, and we went to go see, or we went to go to this, um, it's a lobster place. It's, it's a seafood place. It's called Newick's. It's very, very popular in the, in the seacoast area of, of New Hampshire. Um, and really probably New England. It's very popular. Um, and, uh, so we went there for dinner and, 
and before going, we had talked about like do because it, it, so the night before she was like, I'm gonna buy dinner tomorrow night. So you know, being chivalrous and kind of just being raised in that in that idea of like the man always pays. The first thing I said was, no, you're not. I'm paying. And uh, and she said, no, nope, I'm taking you out on a date. And I said, no, nope, uh-uh, no, it's not happening. So we went back and forth a couple minutes for that. And then the next morning I texted her and I was like, look, if you really want to, then fine. Uh, other options are that we could split it down the middle uh, or we could just get separate checks. I think she actually might have been the one to suggest separate checks. So uh, we talked about it. And we said, yeah, let's do that. You know, fuck it. It's our relationship. We can do whatever we want. So uh, that's what we'll do. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what we did. We went to dinner and we sit down. And, I mean, it's very obvious when we're walking in, like we're holding hands. And it's very obvious we're, we're in a relationship. And we sit there and we talk and we have great conversation. And then at the end of it, I paid for what I got and she paid for what she got. Um, you know, I tipped based on what I got. She tipped based on what she got. And, uh I don't know. I just thought it was really different. And so did she that like we could be together for a year and go out to dinner and um, and get whatever we want and not worry about like, oh, the other person's going to have to pay for this. Uh, Dude, I got a fucking lobster. Holy shit. The fucking lobster is so overpriced when you go out for it anywhere, because I was telling her a story about I went to this 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 like sandwich place in Portsmouth one day. And I had a decent amount of money in my bank account anyways. Like, I had just gotten paid, and I had just gotten a few other things. So I had my, my bank account was looking all right. And uh, so money wasn't really a concern to me. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the menu, and uh, I see lobster roll. And uh, I was like, you know what? I haven't had lobster in a long time. I'm going to get this lobster roll. And it says market price on it. So it says that this lobster roll is loaded with a, with a pound of lobster. And I look at I look at the price and it says market price and I do the math in my head. I'm thinking, all right, you know, lobster goes for about eight dollars a pound. Even if you include like you know they want to make a profit off of this thing, and uh, and um, you know whatever it costs to get it there, whatever. I'm like, yeah, it's probably gonna be like ten or twelve bucks, right, to make a fucking you know to to take lobster and put it on a hot dog bun. I got the fucking lobster roll. This thing was $30 $30 for a fucking lobster roll Uh, and not much lobster. I go out to dinner the other night, and I said I want one lobster. Uh, One lobster, and again, it says market price on it. And I know that lobster, if you go to Market Basket or Hannaford or fucking Piggly Wiggly or whatever your local fucking grocery store is to get lobster, I know that it's about $8 to $10 a pound. And I go to the, we go to this restaurant, I get one lobster, it's a pound and a half lobster, and, um, and, you know, trying to, to stay as neat and clean as I can, I didn't even get all of the meat out of it, uh, I don't think, I mean, I got most of the meat out of it, but I didn't even get all of the, my favorite part is the, I know a lot of people's favorite part of the lobster is the claw, for me it's the tail, that's my favorite part of the lobster, um, so, anyways, uh, you know, I get this lobster, then I get my bill. I look at the bill. It's thirty nine dollars for this lobster. For this lobster, that they probably, you know, like Market Basket sells it for ten dollars a pound, and that's they're marking that up to make a profit. And and this place is probably getting the lobster fresh out of some place that it came off of a boat. Like the boat is probably charging the place six dollars a pound, maybe even five dollars a pound. It's just one of those things where it's like, oh, God, I'm in the wrong business. Like, I do see people. There are people in Portsmouth who, like, they don't have a fucking boat, or at least they don't have a big boat. You know, maybe they just have a little boat, like a little tiny boat, and they have a couple of lobster traps. They have a few lobster traps, and they throw them at the bottom of the Piscataqua, and they catch a few lobster, and then they sell them off. And, I mean, but again, you know, like, even if I don't know what they make off of that. You know, if they catch a few lobster every time they go out... You know, let's just say, like, let's just use the number a thousand, right? At the end of the day, you have to calculate what is your time worth because they, they still have to go out on the boat. They're using gas on the boat. They still have to take their time to get it, find who they're going to sell it to. Um, you know, so everything, when it comes to making money, everything is based on what is your time worth, you know? 
to for me to want to make a, a living off of podcasting, I'd have to calculate out what is my time worth. Sean Heron from the We Like Shooting show and and president of the Firearms Radio Network, he probably, you know, he probably makes a decent amount of money just podcasting. But he, it is his life. I mean, he he's answered messages from me before at two in the morning when he's at the studio. Like he's still there at two in the morning working. Um, you know, so you have to calculate out what it, what is your time worth that you can do this just nonstop. You know, and and a show like his or a life like his, uh, you know, pre COVID and hopefully post COVID soon is it includes going to, you know, traveling around the country to things like SHOT Show in Las Vegas, NRA show, um, you know, uh, machine gun shoot, uh, you know, whatever whatever shooting things are going on around the country. Brownells did some, like, country cross-country thing a few years ago where it was a, a bunch of guys in a van going around the country to these different things. You know, how much is your time worth? Yeah, is it fun? Did he have fun? I'm sure he had fun, but still, what's your time worth? So, for me, I think that I'd rather just work at the post office, be able to knock one of these out a week, maybe two, if I can if I can make that work. And then, uh, you know, get back to just, uh, you know, playing video games or fucking studying flying stuff or whatever it is that I'm going to do. So. Um, so, yeah, splitting the check. And then last night we played... Board game. I gotta tell you, um, I've never played board games with a with a significant other. Uh, maybe with my ex wife when my kids, you know, w- when we were together and my kids were young, we may have played like a game. Like we might have had like a family game once. I don't even think it was that much. Um, you know, but but for me and Roe to just sit down at night and and you know twice in the last three weeks, four weeks, three or four weeks. We've done a board game night and played a board game, which is a ton of fun to just sit there having beers. We play this game called Logo, um, which I've been staring at in in her apartment for almost a year. Uh, and we pulled it out and, and played that. It says it's for two players. It says it's two to six players. But then you read the rules and it doesn't really do a good job of describing um how to play it with two players. It does a great job describing it, how it's going, how it works out with more than two players, but not a good job describing how it'll work out with two. So uh, I do want to find a good, if you guys know any good board games for just two, not even just two, if it's rated for two to fucking a hundred, I don't care, but but at least it has good explanation of how to play with two players. So it was fun. She won in the end. Because we started it like three weeks ago, and then it just got really late. Like it took us a total of probably two hours to play this game, maybe even more, maybe maybe three hours. It might have taken us three hours to play this game. I think when we started it a few weeks ago, we played for like two hours, and it was half past midnight when we were done. And I, and I think we, both of us were tired. She was like falling asleep at the table. And I was like, let's take a picture of the board, and we'll mark whose turn it is, and uh, and we'll pick this back up. So we finished it last night. She won, but I was close. I was like, I don't know, because it goes around. The game goes around in a circle to the center of the circle, and then whoever gets to the center of the circle first and can answer two questions correctly wins. So, um, so I got within a few spaces of her. Uh, I was I was getting there, uh, but she won ultimately. So it was fun. And then last night we watched uh, the the. Uh, the penultimate episode of season one of Jupiter's Legend, which uh, I think I talked about last week, it's a show on Netflix, and we really enjoy that show. It's a lot of it's it's fun. Um, I'm looking forward to finishing it tonight. So this is going to be a shorter episode. I don't care. Uh, I really just wanted to you know give you guys some content and do some advertising. So fuck it. Let's get some advertising. Let's talk 4HM clothing. I'll go to his website again. 4HM. Um, I should talk to him about doing a website. He's got a great website. Um, tank tops, t-shirts, hats, uh, visors, shoes, whatever you need. 4HM clothing line. Um, I really like the visor. Uh, you go there, you use offer code adulting at checkout. Get 10% off your entire order. Uh, you'll be helping him out. you help me out. 4HM clothing on Instagram and on Facebook. <clears throat> 
excuse me, um, sponsored collection. Let's check it. Let's check that out. He's got a T-shirt that says "Ask About Me," uh, and then he's got a hat. Excuse me, unisex bouquet flat bill hat that says, uh, "I'm your favorite white rapper's favorite white rapper." Uh, I like that a lot, actually. That's cool. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I so my music taste is so fucked up because I do listen to some white rappers. Um, I also listen to some like white country rappers. Um, I think that my favorite uh, hip hop artist is uh, is Tech Nine. Yeah, probably Tech Nine with a bullet. Um, so. Uh, but there's some white rappers that I listen to. I played that um, uh, MC Painter a few weeks ago on the show. And MC Painter actually sent me a new track. But the problem was my link wouldn't work to it. So I'm trying to get that working so that I can play that on the show. Uh, AdamEve.com. Uh, the first the first sponsor of Adulting Donnie. Almost going on a year relationship. A one year relationship with, uh, with AdamEve.com. Um, best selling. Let's. What are we gonna check out today? Let's check out their lingerie section. See if that's uh. See if that's changed at all. Last time I looked, it wasn't that great. We got. They got sets. They have plus size baby dolls. Role play. They got eight different options in the role play section. What do they got? Uh, naughty service maid. Adam and Eve naughty schoolgirl. Very private sex secretary. Uh, French maid naughty nurse. Uh. Maid to please, so this is a different maid. This is a different take on the uh, on the French maid and bedside nurse, which is a different. It's a different take on the on the naughty nurse. If I was going to pick one of these um, for for my significant other to wear, I think it might be this very private secretary. Um, I got a thing for nylons, so uh, I don't know if this comes with the nylons or not, but certainly looks good. Uh, comes in three different sizes: small, medium, large, extra large, and queen. Um, and scrolling through the pictures, it looks like the nylons are not. In- yeah, stockings not included. Um, what else is in lingerie? Uh, that was in role play. Um, oh, they have menswear. They have a menswear in the lingerie section. They got a hose thong, which is like a, a men's thong that you can put your dick right into they have a gentleman's g-string um let's see oh the rip-off harness set oh uh they have a black knight thong it's a black men's thong that says male power on it brown leopard shorts uh yeah so i would say like if you really want to like imp- like like shock value on your significant other buy one of these and then wear them one night. Don't tell her. Don't tell her until the pants come off for bed. And then uh, and then you, you take your pants off. And then she'll be like, ooh, what's going on there? The thing with a, like, a male thong is that it always makes your junk look bigger. Um, so that's a department that I don't mind getting some help in. So go to adameve.com. Use offer code ADULTING. Get ten, uh, get fifty percent off any one item, just about any one item. As we went over on the last episode, it's not actually any item, um, and we've been over it before with other items. Um, it does bother me that their website right now. I mean, I'm looking at it. It says more day sale, up to eighty percent off. Shop now, and then you go there and you look at some things, and it's like not. Uh, well, I guess uh, in their defense, it does say up to eighty percent off. So. I don't know what it is that is actually 80% off. Um, probably something like, uh, yeah, like like Adam and Eve Masturbator Lube uh, was nineteen ninety five, marked down to six fifty seven. So that's probably 80%. That's, pro- that's probably where they're getting 80% from. Um, the Adam and Eve's personal trainer pussy. Um, Let's see here. What else do we got? Adam's remote control rotating warming power boost dildo. Um, I wonder. I do wonder about this because it, it, so this is marked. This is was ninety nine ninety five. It's marked down to uh, thirty nine ninety eight. And if I were to take that and then go to my cart, is is uh. Let's see here. 
Uh, let me remove what I had there from the last episode. Thirty nine ninety eight is what it says right now uh, for enter code adult enter code adulting and apply and yeah so that keeps it at thirty nine ninety eight but you get the free shipping and you get the uh, you get the romance kit and the DVD kit um, so that's adameve.com. use offer code adulting fifty percent off most any one item free shipping all the time applies and you get the romance kit and the DVD pack. I mean that the the romance kit and the DVD pack alone are valued around probably I don't know 30 40 50 bucks. So and then this month's sponsor um let's see here. Let me open this up. Support for Adulting with Donnie is brought to you by Manscaped. Oh wait, hold on. I got to I got to throw my ticker up there on the on the video. There we go. Uh support Four, Adulting with Donnie is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Champions of the world, Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. I lost my place. Uh, let's see here. Eh, shit. Uh, I'm one of, okay, yeah, here we go. Um, join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code ADULTING at manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized tri- trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. And uh, and I would suggest going to their website and getting one of their shaving mats. Uh, I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0, and I'm blown away by the performance the craftsmanship and detail on the 4.0 are next level. Um, I will, uh, I will say, uh, so that's in the copy to read, but it's, it's, it's something that I also am with. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with saying it. And I emailed when they said that they wanted to sponsor the show. I said, look, here's the thing. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, do a sponsorship on something that I don't believe in. You're gonna need to send me a product for me to at least test out. Uh, so they did. They sent me the four, the, the the uh, the trimmer 4.0 uh, the lawnmower 4.0 I'll talk about it more in a minute here um, but uh, but nobody likes shaving nobody likes shaving their balls and like accidentally cutting yourself uh, which I've done too many times um, you know you want to you want something that's going to not not nick you and make you bleed because that's that would be the, that is the worst is to like cut yourself and then you're bleeding and then you know that you're like you know, there might be a lady down there in the next 10 or 20 minutes. And, uh, and, and now you're like, what do I do? Cause I'm bleeding right now. Um, Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. I now feel confident shaving my boys. This upgraded trimmer Includes a multifunction on-off switch that can engage a travel lock. It also gives you the ability to turn on, uh, to turn the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. That spotlight is awesome. That is such a good idea to put that spotlight on there. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with uh, sizes one through four. Did I mention wireless charging? The new wireless charging system f- uh, uses electromagnetic induction which can help battery length last longer. Men, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, you're doing it wrong. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. It's time to get your own ball and hair and body trimmer uh, with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice, smooth boys. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code ADULTING at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code adulting at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use adu- uh, use code adulting. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tool for the job with Manscaped. And, uh, yeah, again, their website offers so much more than just um, just, uh, just a, a ball trimmer. Um, I already mentioned the Magic Mat. They have fucking... Uh, Groin shaving gel, ball toner and refresher, body wash, uh, anti-chafing ball deodorant, foot deodorant. Um, what else is on here? Uh, I gotta 
scroll down here. Uh, cologne, uh, foot deodorant, ball wipes, uh, electric nose, uh, uh, electric nose and ear hair trimmer called the Weed Whacker. Um, yeah, I mean, just so much on here. They got a regular face tr- a face shaver blade, uh, crop care kit, uh, performance package, boxers, t-shirts. They have so much. They have so much more on their website than I thought they would. Um, so, again, manscaped.com. Use offer code ADULTING at checkout. 20% off your entire order, plus free shipping worldwide. All right. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, the, other, the other night after, after, um, after having uh, seafood dinner, uh, we got home, and uh, here's the thing, right? So, so Ro, like not long ago, like a month or two ago, Ro goes shopping one day with with her mom and her sister, and uh, and while she's out, she says, uh, she says, "Hey, I want to buy you some stuff today. If if uh, if I give a hundred dollar budget, will you pay me back the hundred dollars? And I will. Uh, and if I go over, then I'll then I'll cover that. But you know." Just you know, can I have uh, can I have a budget of a hundred to go to to shop for you? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I don't I don't I'm not good at shopping for myself. I have pairs of jeans that I've had for the last ten years. So uh, so she does that, and then um, and then she comes home. She's bought me like three pairs, three new pairs of shoes, a bunch of shirts and pants, and uh, but one of the pairs of shoes that she buys me is like these slippers, like men's slippers. They're like uh, they're like they're like a brown leather house slipper. Um, you know, they don't tie or anything. You just slip your foot into them to walk around and she was like, you know, I bought these cuz so that you know, you're not walking around here in your socks. You can wear these to walk around. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh so I so I do that. I wear those and um and then the other night we come home from Newix and uh, we both get into comfy clothes, which her ideal of comfy clothes is like, I don't know, like a, like shorts type of thing, like those women's like pajama shorts and a tank top. And I'm wearing like, uh, you know, the proverbial wife beater t-shirt, you know, the, the men's tank top. I don't know what you call I don't know what you want. I'm wife beater, see, to call it a wife beater in 2021 Seems like something I might say that's going to get me in trouble. So I don't know what else to call it, though. Because if I say men's tank top, is everyone going to understand what that is? I don't know. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. But uh, but anyways, that's what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing white socks and uh, and these slippers. In my opinion, <coughs> I don't look attractive. This is not my idea of of looking hot. So, uh, but anyways, that, so that's what I wear. And uh, that's what I'm wearing. And she's in the kitchen. And I come up behind her and give her a hug from behind. Which I didn't intend anything to happen. I just wanted to give her a hug. I should have known better because I know that she loves that. And uh, and then I give her a kiss on the neck. And, uh, you know, we we make the, the proverbial marital love at that point. And, um, and neither of us really get very much undressed. We're both pretty much mostly wearing the things that we were wearing before this started. And afterwards, I said to her, Jesus Christ, like how much has changed in the past? year? Like if you had told me that if you told me in May of 2020, hey, a year from now, you're going to be in a kitchen having sex with this beautiful biracial woman. Uh, with with what you've always envisioned as the body of who you want to be with, and while you're doing it, you'll look how you look right now, which is not perfect, and you'll also be wearing these brown leather slippers. I never would have believed. There's no way I would ever fucking believed you. I, in my opinion, I look in the mirror wearing this and I'm like, oh my God, how ridiculous do I look? Like, there's no, I, no, I, absolutely not. Uh, I, there's no way I could have believed you a year ago if you told me that. I don't know how I got so fortunate 
to uh, to to do that. I guess I'm doing something right. I don't know what it is. Maybe telling her, uh, let's split the check. Um, just really turn her on. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I just know that I'm a very I'm a very lucky lucky person. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's what's going on there. I guess Kamala Harris said some like uncool tweet this week. Not that I try, not that, you know, not that I try to get very political on my show to begin with, um, but I, I had said something the other day because, like I said, right now it's right now it's Sunday. This episode isn't coming out until Wednesday, so you know Memorial Day weekend has come and gone. Um, but uh, but I had a post on my own sh- on my own page the other day that said, uh, um, you know, this is Memorial Day weekend. Just an FYI, this is for remembering, you know. Memorial Day weekend is for remembering the fallen. I know I just talked about it last week on my show or, or maybe a couple of weeks ago. Memorial Day is for remembering people who have died. It is not for it is not for, you know, me as having served. It is for people who died who did serve this country. Um Kamala Harris had a tweet that just was a picture of herself and said, Enjoy the long weekend. Which is weird because wasn't she in the military? Like, was she, wasn't she like a Marine or something like that? Or maybe I'm thinking of Tulsi. Uh, Kamala Harris military service. I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of fucking results. Um, okay, good. I got her. I got her. Uh, I got her Wikipedia first. But uh, did she serve in the military? Uh, unfortunately, when you search a person like this. You get, uh, it doesn't look like she served in the military, actually. Um, it doesn't look like it. Um, criminal justice. I mean, I know that she was in the you know, early career, early life and education, um, public safety, district attorney in San Francisco, violent crimes, reform efforts. Yeah, it doesn't look like she served in the military. I'm thinking of Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard served in the military. Um, so, but yeah, to, to post the, I guess she posted this thing, a picture of herself saying, enjoy the long weekend, which, you know, every year it gets brought up that Memorial Day is about more than just cookouts. It is, unfortunately, it is the unofficial start of summer. It's, everyone refers to it as the unofficial start of summer. Everyone has cookouts. Uh, here in New Hampshire is fucking pouring rain. So there ain't no one having any cookouts today. I don't think, uh, more than likely, nobody's having any big cookout. I mean, you know, people who planned on having cookouts are probably like they're running the grill in the garage, trying to burn their house down. Um, but yeah, I guess that's what she said. I don't know. For me, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. You know, uh, you know, a politician saying something dumb. What else is new? They, they do that. You know, we we just went through four years of 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 Trump saying that. Before that, we went through eight years of. Luckily, Obama didn't say in my opinion, a lot of dumb stuff. I thought the dumbest thing that Obama said in his eight years, the dumbest thing he said was when when that officer, uh, when that Cambridge police officer arrested the Harvard professor, when that happened, someone asked Obama about it at a press conference, and his response was, I think the Cambridge police acted stupidly. That was his response. To me, I think he just should have been like, I don't know, I wasn't there. I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. I'm not a police officer. I don't, I, you know, how law enforcement works is not my thing. I think that's what he should have said. Instead, he said what he said and got a lot of backlash for it. And, uh, you know, then he has to have this thing about like, oh, I'm going to invite this Cambridge police officer and this, and this Harvard professor to the White House and we'll have a beer together. Like, yeah, it's cool and all, and uh, and you know that Cambridge officer might have even been like, I, just, yeah, I'm not going, you know, and then he might have been heavily encouraged to go. But uh, you know, I I think it's I think it's incredible when when people who've never been police officers can, you know, they they they'll Monday morning Monday morning quarterback how the how law enforcement acted. I'm not giving them a pass at all. I think that in the last ten or fifteen years, or maybe even a hundred years. There are many examples of law enforcement not acting the way that they should. Um, but, uh, but I do think that there's a big difference between, um, between me and the president of America to say, 
you know, but then you fast forward to Trump and he didn't say anything. And I don't think it's right to not say anything either. When George Floyd died, I think that Tr- Trump should have said something when the entire country is rallying saying, you know, this is wrong. Trump, who's so outspoken about being pro-police, also should have said something. He should have said something. I don't care what it was. Uh, you know, I guess I do care on a level of what it was. But he could have also said, look, I wasn't there. Maybe we should wait for all the facts to come out. If he did act inappropriately, then he should be condemned for it. You know, he should be charged and treated like that. Uh, you know, he should be charged and treated as anyone else who, who killed someone, whether it was intentional or not. Um, so, anyways, those are just the opinions of this guy. So, I think that's going to do it for me. I knocked out two episodes in one week. Not too bad. Uh, granted, I cheated and did it on a Sunday ahead of time and um, and and did them both at the same time. So, but whatever, we'll see. I'll, I'll try and knock out two a week for the month of June. Uh, don't forget to go to man- manscaped.com. Use offer code ADULTING, 20% off, plus free shipping worldwide. Don't forget to check out my pages, Instagram, uh, Adulting Donnie on Instagram, Adulting with Donnie podcast on Facebook. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, suicide prevention line is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. And also... Uh, you should be able to find in any podcasting app, uh, the new podcast with me and Stan, we deliver, we just recorded episode four, I think of that show, episode four, we deliver, uh, which is just two male guys shooting the shit about being mail carriers, having some fun doing that. So, uh, that does it for me. Um, there's a new episode of uh, of Gunshop Guys on the on the feed and and on the Facebook page, Gunshop Guys podcast on Facebook on uh, Facebook. There's a new episode there. It's only 15 minutes long, and it's just me, uh, kind of trying to tell you guys what happened with that show. So if you are interested and you're wondering what happened to Gunshop Guys, uh, feel free to go and check out that episode. And that's gonna do it for me. See you, everyone.